Uh, welcome, everyone, um, and everyone who hasn't been with us in the morning sessions. Uh, welcome to this uh, kickoff to our afternoon sessions um, at the University of Denver for our inaugural Tracy Mott workshop. We already had a very productive morning, uh, covered six papers, uh, I think were very uh, intriguing. We're going to shift now a little bit to more personal reflections on Tracy Mott's uh, intellectual contributions, particularly with respect to his writing uh, on Kaletsky. And on that note, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce Jan Toporowski as our guest speaker. Uh, he is professor of economics and finance, both at SOAS and at uh, International University College in Turin. Uh, his research concentrates on monetary theory, policy, finance, and notably the work of Michael Kaletsky, whom he has written multiple books about. Uh, and he has written many books and many, many papers and uh, is a well-known researcher in this area. He has also uh, worked in the private sector in finance for uh, a long time before returning to academia and has consulted for the United Nations Development Program and UNCTAD and the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa and the Economic Intelligence Unit. Uh, so he brings to a, us a full spectrum of uh, private sector finance experience, policy experience at multiple levels, uh, and of course, a career's worth of rich academic experience. And so with that, please welcome on top of us. Thank you very much, uh, Marcus, uh, for that very, very generous uh, uh, introduction uh, uh, and, and presentation uh, of me. Uh, I, uh, you know, I, I, I have to thank you for that. I have to thank you and the faculty um, and the others for having organized uh, this conference for uh, 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 or to commemorate uh, a very uh, dear friend, a personal friend in uh, uh, in economics, uh, something that one doesn't normally find uh, in economics. You know, one, one talks economics with uh, with other economists. Uh, one doesn't make the kind of personal connections. Uh, that Tracy uh, was uh, uh, was famous for, and that I'm sure uh, ways in which I think he touched the lives of uh, many people here. Uh, I, I, also, I would also like to thank the previous speakers um, I, for a really a most thought provoking uh, set of papers. Uh, I, I had some questions, some comments on virtually all of them, but refrained because actually some of them, uh, some of those comments will come in the course of my presentation. So I didn't want to um, do, uh, 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 you know, I didn't want to insist on my point of view twice. <laughs> I'll just do it once. <laughs> this time and see if you agree. Um, let me say how uh, I knew Tracy. Um, uh, uh, at the end of the 1980s, uh, I ceased my career in, uh, my formal career in, uh, in finance, banking and finance, and became an academic. I came across post-Keynesians. And at some, at one of the, uh, some post-Keynesian workshop in honor of uh, Caldor, I met Nina Shapiro uh, and revealed to her that I, I had a certain interest in, in Kaletsky. And she said, oh, well, you must meet my friend, Tracy Mott. Uh, you know, how could I meet him? At that time, you, uh, there, there wasn't email. Uh, you could telephone uh, people uh, at various hours of the night, you know, if you're phoning between uh, London uh, and, and the United States, uh, or you could correspond uh, uh, with people, correspond on paper. 
Uh, and I, sometime in the 1990s, I, I guess early 1990s, I must have uh, met uh, Tracy and immediately uh, hit it off. Uh, Tracy was the person who introduced me to uh, a, a very, another very important Kaletskian, uh, Julio Lopez. Uh, maybe some of, some of you may have uh, uh, come across uh, who also sadly died in, uh, in, in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, I came and visited uh, uh, Tracy here. He played, uh, he played his guitar for me and sang. Uh, I played my violin badly. And we, you know, we got on. Uh, and uh, thereafter, I, uh, I, I always found his comments always very, very perceptive. Uh, and I was really impressed by the range of uh, his uh, reading. Now, one of the things that uh, impressed me about him, apart from the fact that we were both interested in the same uh, issues in economics, uh, was also the character of uh, Tracy's uh, economics. Tracy was uh, interested in economics um, as any person should be, uh, as any right thinking person should be, uh, because essentially he was politically committed. Uh, and uh, he saw a, a progressive way forward for the United States, which could only be uh, achieved uh, if you understand, if you understood the economics. Uh, behind that, and that was his reason for uh, uh, for studying economics. Uh, it was, uh, but I think what made made him different from uh, other politically motivated economists was that he didn't take shortcuts in um, in make believe in uh, making up stories that would reinforce a conclusion that he had already come to, a prior conclusion. Uh, he was uh, remarkably open-minded, wanted to know how things work, uh, and what was the discussion around uh, particular issues. And I think this is, uh, this is again, a, a, a virtue which um, uh, I sometimes uh, uh, amongst radicals, it the, the lack of it uh, irritates me, just as I admire the strength of people's uh, commitments to uh, 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 to a better world, as I admire uh, as I admire Tracy's commitment to a better world. Uh, let me now say something uh, more general about Kalitsky's economics, and then come on to where Tracy came in. Uh, interest in Kalitsky's economics, I think, is, since 1970, has been confined largely uh, to uh, post-Keynesian circles, uh, where uh, at the end of the 1930s, he was one of the most uh, widely quoted uh, of economists uh, because of his part in the, in the Keynesian revolution. Uh, the, the, the developments in modeling and all the rest of it. Uh, uh, by the 1970s, he, he was uh, uh, he was not considered that interesting in mainstream economics. Uh, and some of the older generation, people like Solo, uh, still thought and still think highly of him, but uh, I'm not, uh, 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 but beyond that older generation, amongst the younger people, no, there are supposed to be new, different uh, approaches, different models have come into uh, fashion. Occasionally, uh, aphorisms by Kaletsky surface uh, in blogs. Uh, for those that have read Kaletsky, uh, you will know this was some, uh, someone uh, 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 you know, for his bad English uh, in places, uh, his style, uh, uh, his sardonic 
uh, means of expression, his sardonic and very uh, short, lapidary uh, way of stating things uh, was very distinctively his, you know, by contrast with Keynes, who, uh, <laughs> who wrote long, long sentences. Uh, Kalecki, who's bro brought up, uh, incidentally, in a language which values long sentences, <laughs> Kalecki was very, very brief. Uh, his, so his aphorisms occasionally surface. Uh, 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 recently, I guess, Krugman's, uh, Krugman picked up on the social function of sound finances to make the level of employment dependent on the state of confidence, the state of confidence of business. So, you know, this, uh, comments like this um, uh, make uh, uh, Kalitsky uh, always interesting to read. Uh, there is a, 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 obviously an interest uh, among post Keynesians uh, where Kalitskian economics fills gaps in Keynes. And I guess the two most uh, uh, important gaps in this regard are the theory of distribution, uh, which doesn't really surface uh, in the general theory. Uh, and secondly, uh, the business cycle, which uh, can, uh, it, it, again didn't come quite come uh, come right in the general theory uh, among uh, Marxists. Uh, Marxists have always admired. Uh, or, no, again, always. Many of them have admired Kalecki as a theorist of monopoly capital. Those who are interested in monopoly capital uh, go for Kalecki, so Sweezy does. Um, uh, John King, by contrast, refers to uh, Kalecki as, uh, along with Sweezy, a left Keynesian, uh, not quite one of us. For people uh, of the Italian school, uh, people like uh, Riccardo Bellafiore, Joseph Halevi, uh, uh, Kalecki was a worthy successor to Rosa Luxemburg, uh, someone who uh, sorted out uh, the uh, certain anomalies in, in Luxembourg's accumulation uh, of uh, capital. Uh, for people who are uh, 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 more politically, uh, even more politically committed, uh, many of those have appreciated uh, Kalecki as a critic of military Keynesianism. Uh, his analysis of how uh, armaments substitute um, uh, for um, or progressive uh, expenditure policies in, uh, 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 in fiscal uh, policies that, that could uh, or may possibly get to full employment. Certainly a critic of uh, Nazi uh, full employment. And then of course there is uh, Kalecki's positive uh, socialist uh, economics, uh, his uh, uh, involvement in the Dob Sen debate, his criticism of uh, the idea that uh, you can uh, build uh, socialism by uh, concentrating all your attention on heavy industry and the production means of productions. Uh, sorry, means of production. Uh, Kaletskians have always appreciated uh, Kaletsky's radical ideas on distribution, the business cycle, uh, socialism, uh, development economics. Uh, but there's been a general tendency to deprecate uh, the absence of monetary analysis. So here's uh, my old friend Jeff Harcourt in his forward to Tracy's book on uh, the, the principle of increasing 
risk, uh, Jeff wrote, well, I think Keynes had deeper insight into the monetary and financial aspects of the workings of capitalism. Uh, Kalinsky's setting of the for the overall analysis, Marx's schemes of reproduction was superior to Keynes's Marshallian approach. So there tends to be this uh, kind of approach. I've written, uh, uh, I've just published a book on Kalinsky's monetary theory and some of what I will be saying uh, later on uh, comes from uh, this book. And therefore, but as a result of this perceived gap, there's a tendency for uh, uh, among Kalinskians to engage in a kind of eclectic embrace uh, of Keynesian ideas, and particularly the monetary uh, analysis, and add that to uh, Keynes's view. Tracy's view uh, was different. Uh, Tracy, uh, I'm not, I don't know if this was his intention, but he ended up going in a Kaleskian way to try and make Keynes coherent. As he uh, said in his book uh, on the principle of increasing risk, adding the missing pieces uh, to the conception of the capitalist economy necessary to make what is worthwhile in Keynes's ideas part of a coherent whole. Uh, so yeah, how do you make Keynes part of a coherent whole? Uh, uh, you, uh, Tracy wanted to find an underlying unifying principle to the ideas proposed by Keynes. But of course, to do this, you had to find the point at which Keynes, uh, the point of the analysis that Keynes hadn't quite covered, or hadn't, hadn't covered properly. And that was for Tracy uh, Kalinsky's principle of increasing risk. Uh, I think Tracy, this was one of the, 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 the one of the ideas that I, I immediately recognized in Tracy, and I guess he recognized in me, that uh, uh, Keynes uh, was a brilliant macroeconomist, uh, but his understanding of uh, what was going on within firms uh, was uh, was lacking. Uh, Keynes was quite happy to take on the Marshallian analysis uh, you find uh, 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 with its emphasis on marginalism, with its notion of the firm as being essentially one plant, one factory, uh, uh, rather than thinking of it as uh, a balance sheet. So um, the the way Tracy uh, introduced corporate finance into Keynes was through Kaleski's principle of increasing risk. Uh, the principle of increasing risk is a, a relatively simple idea. It's the idea that the rate of interest on borrowing uh, rises in proportion to the margin of the loan that is not hedged by cash or liquid assets held by the borrower. Uh, we were talking before lunch about the liquid assets of corporations. This is where some of this, this comes in. Uh, the, uh, this refers to uh, the total borrowing of the firm. Uh, and quite clearly, uh, what is uh, the idea behind this is that uh, if a firm borrows money and has the uh, equivalent amount in cash available, then there is uh, you you can borrow at the riskless rate because the money's there. 
uh, to pay for it. The idea was originally put forward by uh, a colleague of uh, Kalecki's, Malik Bright, uh, to explain the inability of monetary policy to stimulate investment in, uh, 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 in the 1930s, around 1930, 31. Uh, and in, in Kalecki, it becomes something much bigger, uh, much more significant, uh, a theory of investment, an explanation of borrowers and lenders' risk, and a theory of the size of firms. Uh, the, the key issue behind this is income gearing. Uh, if you uh, take the terms that Keynes used, borrowers and lenders' risk, Borrower's risk is essentially the possibility that interest payments uh, will absorb operating profit and leave no profit uh, for the borrower. So if the borrower borrows too much, he's not going to make money on the project, on his firm. Uh, for the lender, uh, the lender's risk is the, the possibility that if... Uh, too much is borrowed, uh, the operating profit will be insufficient uh, to pay interest costs. Uh, and here, uh, Mott observes, surely there is a connection between Kalecki uh, and Minsky here. Well, yes, of course, there is in Minsky's famous diagram of uh, showing how firms decide on their investment. Uh, but I think there was more to it than just this particular connection. Uh, in uh, Mott's view, this principle of increasing risk is the micro foundation of uh, the economic activities of firms, or, the, uh, or, or of not just of firms, but of the economy as a whole. This is as opposed to uh, what we uh, what we taught from the mainstream textbooks from uh, the new classical view of Lucas, uh, that essentially uh, micro, the micro foundations of any economy have to be household optimization. Uh, because Mott, like Kalecki, realized that the key decisions in the economy, if we exclude the government, key decisions in the economy are made not by households, but by firms. And in particular, the key decision of investment. Uh, and this extended to uh, Tracy's understanding of Joseph Steindl, uh, uh, Tracy Mott and Nina Shapiro put together a very nice volume of essays uh, on uh, 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 on Joseph Steindl. Uh, I regret somewhat that uh, Tracy didn't contribute to that uh, volume. Um, Tracy actually, in in his writings on Steindl, concentrated on maturity, the, the maturity and stagnation thesis, markup pricing, and he didn't really pick up on uh, what was a running theme in uh, Steindl's work, uh, and that was his critique of the Marshallian theory of the firm. It's interesting that uh, if we exclude his last volume of uh, collected papers, uh, Steindl wrote three books. All of them start in the same place, with a critique of the Marshallian theory of the firm. Uh, for uh, Mott's uh, research agenda, uh, this places business finance as the foundation of the economic theory of capitalism. Business finance being uh, not just the corporate finance that we were talking about earlier, 
but also small business finance. Uh, Steindl's first book, uh, Small and Big Business, uh, written uh, in Oxford in the immediate post-war uh, years, uh, Steindl was employed on a project examining uh, the economics of finances of business. So uh, he then highlighted this distinction between small and big business. And the common theme uh, in looking at the economics of small and big business is the element of pr principle of increasing, the common element is the principle of increasing risk. Uh, the reason why small businesses cannot become big, big businesses is because of the principle of increasing risk. And the principle of increasing risk then determines what they do and what bigger uh, uh, businesses do. So he extended the beyond the theory of pricing, investment and stagnation to business cycle theory, government economic policy uh, as a family matter of capitalists, uh, Kalecki in political aspects of full employment, perhaps Kalecki's most famous uh, article these days, uh, he more or less suggests that capitalists work together. Capitalists don't work together. On the whole, they compete with each other. They, they, they are in competition with each other through markets for profits, but on certain issues, they come together. One of them is influencing government economic policy. And the other one is, I would, I would want to argue is on money. Um, money, the monetary system is a family matter of capitalists. The term family matter uh, comes from uh, Rosa Luxemburg's anti-critique, uh, a book that I doubt that Kalecki ever read, <laughs> probably not Steindl either. But there's an analysis in there of uh, the circulation of money, uh, where Rose, uh, Luxembourg argues that capitalist businesses employ uh, workers, they pay them wages. Uh, the, uh, the wages are spent on consumption goods. So the, the wages that firms pay come back to firms. Uh, and then, of course, uh, there is another circuit of intercapitalist payments, payments uh, uh, capitalists buy consumption goods from each other and they buy investment goods from each other. Uh, so, uh, and those again are, according to Rosa Luxemburg, a family matter. Money goes from one capitalist, one firm uh, to another. So that the uh, the, uh, money is a system of intercapitalist settlement. And I use this term, I've highlighted the term settlement uh, because uh, this is something different from payments. Uh, settlements are uh, payments on debt. If you like, it's the, it's the transactions that go through the financial circulation of money. Uh, the Bank for International Settlements, when it was set up, it was called that, and not the Bank for International Payments, because they were, the, it, it was specifically about the payments on debts, uh, interest payments, and so on. So uh, for Kalecki, uh, money uh, is something which capitalists have and they use. This is as opposed to, uh, and they pay each other either directly or through the wages they pay uh, uh, their employees, or if you, want, if you want it on a larger scale through the government, through, the, uh, uh, through foreign trade. 
And this is as opposed to the Keynesian uh, state theory of money, uh, charterism, or the bank credit theory of money that Robertson would for, which is we're essentially, uh, for the one, uh, money is essentially uh, a state, uh, a state affair uh, to do with uh, what Randy was talking about yesterday, uh, uh, the government uh, uh, taxation and expenditure. For Robertson, uh, money was what banks uh, create. Bank credit is uh, something that banks uh, create. And in the process of this circulation of money from capitalist to capitalist, you have something uh, uh, arise in which uh, Steindl called forced indebtedness. In the monopoly capital, uh, in the monopoly capitalism uh, idea, uh, monopoly firms, oligopolies, have a disproportionately high, high rate of profit, and they can protect that profit through the ups and downs. That, they can protect that profit margin through the ups and downs of the business cycle. Uh, small business, uh, as, as Hilferdin pointed out, small businesses can't do this, and they take the brunt of the losses uh, that arise in the recession. And this is what uh, the uh, 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 Steindl called forced uh, indebtedness. Uh, the indebtedness of small businesses, which is the counterpart of the monopoly profits of uh, corporations. Uh, this is, uh, Steindl used this term in, in connection with household uh, savings. Steindl essentially argued, uh, uh, where he uses this term, he says, where uh, household savings, uh, uh, a positive aggregate level of household savings means that there's an equivalent loss to uh, businesses. And this is this forced indebtedness. So the savings of the household have their counterpart in the losses of uh, firms, which are then forced to borrow. And the loans to cover that borrowing are the counterpart in the bank balance sheet of uh, the savings of the households. Uh, but then I want to argue a similar process happening with uh, corporate monopoly profits, which had their counterpart enforced uh, uh, borrowing by small businesses. And uh, the, with the principle of increasing risk, raising the cost of business debt for small businesses. Uh, this is, you know, we all know about. Uh, what's less well known is of course that uh, uh, the uh, small, oops, the small uh, 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 the small businesses, uh, a surprising number of them run at losses. Uh, they maintain themselves very often, they're, they, they're very often family firms, they maintain themselves by one or two members of the family or in employment who pay bills for the business. But if you were to examine their accounts properly, they, they may well be uh, making a loss. And I think it's this small business debt which is uh, neglected in some of the financialization uh, narrative. Uh, the uh, a lot of the financialization uh, narrative argues that the household debt is the counterpart of corporate monopoly profits. I think that that's not the case. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, it's not the corporate uh, household debt uh, has its counterpart, usually in household, other households having the liquidity 
uh, having the savings? What is uh, 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 what is the counterpart of corporate uh, monopoly profits? Is forced indebtedness of small businesses. And as I said, the principle of increasing risk raises the cost of that business debt. So um, let me uh, conclude. Um, I think Tracy's principle of increasing risk is an unfinished research agenda. Uh, we've heard uh, you don't just have my word for this. Uh, we've heard uh, a, a number of papers yesterday and today uh, really showing uh, highlight, uh, uh, showing areas where this principle of increasing risk may be developed uh, into, uh, 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 into new discoveries a new uh, applied research. Um, and I also want to argue that it's much more comprehensive than appears from the published writings uh, of Tracy Mott. Uh, it's not just about corporate finance. In a capitalist economy, uh, in a business economy, that corporate finance is the basis for uh, macroeconomics and it was this I want to argue is which is what uh, Tracy was trying to do in his book and in his writings uh, bringing in the monetary theory of finance and fiscal and monetary policy so on this note uh, I will uh, finish thank you very much uh, for your attention.